Alright, I don't see a lot of tutorials on this specific thing, which is uh, manipulating your UV 1 and 2 channels. So I just wanted to quickly go over this. Um, so the problem that I'm having is that me and the project I'm working on, we have meshes which have uh, these color IDs set up. Each one of those color IDs will correspond to a material when we put it into our, our engine. Um, and I'm needing to get each one of these specific uh, color IDs into these specific boxes. And I don't want to have to, uh, at the end of the process, blow away all of my modifiers and then export it out. And then if there's a change that needs to be made, go back and redo all of that work. So the way of procedurally handling this is to... Um, First of all, you want to have all of your UVs set up down the center line of your U-axis. You can see over here, like I'm operating UV channel 2, uh, which is where all of the uh, material stuff will happen in the game engine. Uh, UV1 is uh, all of the normal map and uh, ambient occlusion information. Um, you want to have your UV2s set up uh, exactly down the center line. And for your UV ones, you can have them set up. However, we're going to be resetting the UV ones, like your UV one channel, um, back to the starting position, and then offsetting it so that we can just quickly hit a button to export it out for, to Marmoset or whatever baking engine we have. Um, the other bit of setup we have is that we have four different, or actually, we can go over this last one. We have three different vertex groups, the offset group, which will just delineate um, which one of these meshes we're going to be defining, or which one of these um, uh, UV shells we're going to be offsetting, and then the mirror L and mirror R, which gives us, um, which will give us our left and right um, UV shells for the uh, UV channel one. So to start off with, we just put turn on our mirror modifier, um, and as you can see, it looks really messed up. Um, and the way to fix that is, first of all, we make sure we have our merge vertices turned off, and then we just we have our we click on mirror. The process the, turning on mirror mirrors all of our UVs, which is exactly what we want because we want to have the UV channel two mirrored over as well. So what will happen if we apply it is this. Okay, so in UV2, we have our UVs nice and mirrored down the center. And in the UV1 channel, um, this is not what we want, which is having the UVs mirrored onto the other side of the UV map. That is uh, very bad, and we need to fix that. So to fix that, we'll come to the next step. So I'll just undo destroying our mirror modifier. Um, and then come down here to our first UV warp, which is UV1, which I named UV1 underscore fix. And when I turn that on, it immediately fixes. We immediately get back all of our normal map and ambient inclusion map information. And what that does is it's tied to the vertex group mirror.r. And uh, just to explain, the mirror.l and mirror.r specifically are made to work with the mirror modifier. Um, so when you apply mirror.l, let's say I have mirror.l selected here, uh, Blender knows that um, when you have a mirror modifier applied uh, and you have these vertex groups on, it'll take the information in mirror.l and then when you mirror it, it'll put that mirrored information into mirror.r. Um, and that's how we're able to get this side, uh, our opposing side of the mirrored mesh as a selection, which is what we need to select for the vertex group here. And uh, then we do a negative one offset. And the negative one offset will, going back to our UV1 channel, the negative one offset moves it from being out into space over here. It will instead move the whole mesh, or the whole UV set for UV1, out to here, off of the zero, 1 space. And the other part is the negative scale. 
and before when we had our UVs um, mirroring, they went from here to here, and instead it flips it back from um, this side of the UVs to where it we want it, where we wanted it originally. And the reason why this works is because when we mirror um, our vertices, our selection is clean. Um, if we have the merge vertices turned on, I'll just click that real quick. All of a sudden, you get this information. Um, like all of this is just messed up. And this is a problem that I've been running into for a long time, trying to fix this out, figure this out. Um, it is Blender is trying to uh, grab this information, like the vertex groups down the center. Um, but because it's both part of the left and right vertex group, it's just shearing the vertexes between them. And if I were to apply this, you'll you'll see like it looks really really messed up. Uh, this is actually it doesn't. That's because. Uh, okay, I think that's because of all the other modifiers that are applied. So, um, but yeah, you can see that it's messed up down the center line because we have merge vertices turned on, and then once we have it turned off, like it, it is able to delineate between the two halves because they're, uh, even though they look this like they're connected, they're actually separate meshes. So once we have our UV1 channel fixed, we go to the UV2 offset, uh, which is um, a, a second UV warp. And when we turn that on, it's very simple. It's just saying, go to the UV2 channel right here and use the UV layer, UV2 channel, offset it by one. So it's grabbing all of these existing UVs, which, are, which include the procedurally flipped over mirror UVs and it's just moving them over by one space like it'll move out to somewhere over here and it'll take everything which is great but not what we want because we still have this area right here which we want to be green and that means we have to offset it in the uh, in the opposite direction and the way we do that is just by going over to our next modifier uh, which is the UV which is the last UV warp. And the last UV warp, when we turn it on, it's using the vertex group offset. And we offset it by negative 1.5. We have the UV layer set to UV channel two. And uh, the reason why this works, if we, is because this is also a separate mesh. Like, uh, it's floating geometry right now. It's not welded into anything else. If we did weld it, um, before we did our modifiers, what would happen is um, merge by distance. It, it doesn't look that bad right here. Like it might not be very noticeable, but all of a sudden, like all of these um, vertices are also colored and they're wrong. And it's because the UV map is shearing, trying to accommodate the fact that there are vertices that are supposed to be on the left hand side and also on the right hand side of where we're offsetting. And I think it'll be, yeah, it's, it's even, it's the same over here. And then no matter how much we offset, like it'll just keep on going out until we eventually get to the end of, um, end of our UVs. Uh, if we were to apply this, there'd be one long stretch of mesh going from one side of the UV map to the other side. That just looks really bad and it's not what we want. So that's why we have to have the mesh separated. There we go. Yeah, that's why we want to have this mesh separated out. We want to have these um, faces not welded in yet um, so that the vertex group apply is only applying to this one area and then the vertexes surrounding are on the own vertex group and then the last thing which of course like brings it all together and allows us just to export it straight into whatever engine or whatever we need to is the weld modifier and it's just set to the 0 0.001 
uh, distance, which is the same default as the mirror UVs. Uh, we do that last because it's handle blast, and it doesn't affect any of the other operations that we've uh, performed before we get to the weld modifier, which is great. And then if I am to just send this to Max, and this is just a plug-in VMAX connector, and then I go over to Max, you can already see. I'll just delete that. Get from Blender. And then do look at my UVs. Open the V editor. And you can see we have the same UVs that we had expected and had in Blender, which is UV1 uh, is in the 0.1 space and it's offset so that we have, um, we'll, we'll get a clean bake out of Marmoset. And then when we go over to our UV2 channel, it's offset exactly as we expected, exactly what we want. Um, our UV2 set has this, the blue area offset to the right, and then we have our other area, the green area, offset to the left. And what that allows us to do is like when we have a bunch of other objects coming in, we can simply say offset by 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, and all we have to do is make sure it's down the center of our UV space and just move it up. And we can, can very easily like get um, the UVs that we need out of it without any kind of effort and without breaking uh, the procedural workflow. Uh, all right, that's it. Hope this helps.